Evaluating LLMs and AI models in general is a crucial step that you should consider when pushing anything that you build with an AI model inside it into production. So an evaluation is essentially a test or a series of tests that you perform on an AI model in order to understand how accurate the output is. So let's say that you want the AI model to output a specific thing 90% of the times, you use an evaluation to measure that. And if it meets your requirements in terms of accuracy, then you're confident that you can push that onto production. And I'm very excited to mention to you that they have added the capability of doing evaluation inside NA10, which is great news, especially for no code builders. And regarding the importance of evaluations, don't take my word for it. Take the word from giants such as Vercel and Anthropic. So the Verso CTO mentioned that a prompt without evaluations is like getting a broken machine without a manual. And in the Anthropic blog, it's mentioned that our internal teams rely on test-driven development for prompts and that every new system prompt is accompanied by an evaluation suite that must pass before deployment. So essentially what they're saying here is that their internal teams use and set up these evaluations in order to improve their system prompts. And this is what evaluations are mainly used for to improve the system prompts. And the main reason we use evaluations to improve system prompts is because LLMs are essentially black boxes. We don't really know what's happening inside it and how to change it effectively, you know? So with code, what you can do is on a specific section of code, you can add a certain print statement. So I'm not saying that this specific print statement does that, but you could add a print statement whenever there is an error within the section of code, and then you'll be able to understand how to fix that. You can't do that with LLMs because you, we don't exactly know what to change in order to improve the prompt. So what we end up doing is these sort of evaluations where we grab an input, we pass it through the LLM, we get a specific output, right? We pass input two, and then we get output B. And what we have essentially is when we do this, when we pass multiple inputs for different scenarios, we're gonna get the actual output, okay? And what we're doing essentially is matching them against the expected outputs. So this is our ideal scenario. So what we're saying essentially is if we output, let's say one, and we output a zero here, you know, this outputs a two, and this outputs a two, it outputs 10, and this outputs a nine, then, well, we know here that these don't match, therefore we can mark it as wrong. These do match. So this is as expected, right? We, we are getting the ideal scenario over here. And over here, we are not getting what we wanted out of the LLM output. So if you keep doing this over time, you are going to understand the performance of the LLM right? In the way we seen here. So this is a very typical way to do evaluations. And what you'll end up over several hundreds or thousands of runs is, well, how many times did the LLM say the right thing? And how many times did the LLM say the wrong thing? And if it says the right thing, then 60% of the times, and you needed to say that thing correctly 80% of times, well, then this is not ready for production. And you should go in and improve the system prompt. So you go back improve the system prompt or make any other changes in order to improve this accuracy. So that is in a nutshell how evaluations work. Hi there, just briefly want to stop the video to announce that I have finally launched my community, Neuro Architects, where I plan to bring together the smartest people in this space and business owners that want to build the systems of the future together using artificial intelligence. So inside this community, you'll find everything ranging from all the templates that I will make from the YouTube videos, as well as exclusive community calls, and also so much other stuff. So join right now, stay tuned, and I'll see you inside. But the process to understand what prompt changes would improve the metrics is still gray waters. There's some great tools that help with that, but there's no standard to do this. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. And I'm going to show you now the system that I built on NA10 to showcase the evaluations. And the main reason we do this is because we know that LLMs are black boxes. We don't really understand how they work inside. So unlike with a piece of code that you can just, you know, let's say you have a section of code, you can print, you have a print statement inside it, and it will print whenever there is an error. You can't do that with an LLM. Okay, you can't have it print an error statement when a specific part of the LLM goes wrong. Okay, we can't do that. So what we do is, well, we give it edge cases or we pass it through outputs from different use cases or scenarios. We define an expected output and then we see how many times did it actually output the right thing, right? And we use the expected output to compare that, right? The expected output or the ideal output. So let's say, as I said, you pass multiple inputs, you get multiple outputs and we do this a decent amount of times. 
Well, let's say that in this case, our expected output is for the LLM to spit the number 10. Okay, number 10. And in the first run, we get number seven. Here we get number 10. Here we get number 10 as well. Okay, so obviously this didn't spit out the expected output. This did and this did. So if you keep running this several hundred, several thousand times maybe, you will expect, let's say that you get an accuracy of 60%. And if you keep doing this and you don't get the accuracy of 90% that you want, well, you know that there's something that you have to change, whether you want to fine tune the model, partially fine tune the model using LoRa, or you want to change the system prompt, which is usually the place you should start with, okay? This gives you an indication of how accurate it is and also where it went wrong, right? Which, which you'll see in further detail in the tutorial, in the, in the actual NA10 workflow that I built for us to see this. So over here, I have this simple workflow that contains this LLM. And this LLM is responsible for classifying emails, okay, request tickets in this case. And in this case, well, we are receiving, for example, a subject and a body, okay, and I'm sending it through here. And what we're outputting is, well, we got to uh, classify this into a category and how high of a priority this is, okay. So that's what we're doing over here. And yeah, so you can see that there's not much going on right now. Okay, so what we have here is a simple workflow to demonstrate this. And we are receiving support tickets from our email and then we're passing it on to this LLM chain. And the LLM chain's purpose is to classify these incoming emails or support tickets. And we're classifying them by category and priority. All right, now you'll see that there's no way to measure the performance of this LLM. So what we do is attach this main node over here, okay, this fetch fetch data set. And what we're doing is that we have this sample data set over here with subjects and bodies that we added. We added all of this manually, okay? You can do it as well. You can invent these. You can create these from scratch with an LLM, or it doesn't matter. But I mainly put these manually, okay? Because I want to make sure they are correct. So we have several examples of what we can receive and then the expected category and priority. Okay, now what we're doing is, well, we're gonna fetch the data sets row by row, and then we are going to set some outputs over here, okay? So we are essentially adding an actual category and an actual priority, and then we're adding them back onto this over here, right? You see columns E and F, we're gonna add them here. So if we actually run this, let's run only this bottom part, you'll see that we're gonna pass these onto the LLMs and then we're getting these outputs. And what I did is that I added a few formulas over here that mention when column E and column C don't match and when column F and column D don't match. Essentially when they are different, uh, we're gonna get the cell highlighted red, indicating that we are not getting the output that we want, okay? So this is a quick visual way to actually perform these evaluations, okay? We're gonna stop this over here very quickly, but at the moment, we can we can do this manually, right? So we'll just count how many times we get the red cells, right? Which is the scenarios where we didn't get the red output. Also for column E, if there's any red cells as well. And then we can measure that, like that, the accuracy, right? The more runs you do, obviously, the, the more accurate the measurement is going to be, the, the metrics for the evaluation. But the key thing over here is that you can use this set metrics node, which is gonna allow you to do something pretty special. So what I'm doing over here is setting some metrics, okay? And I'm gonna show you where what, what this is gonna do in a moment. So I added these scores, okay? And these scores are very simple. So I added this expression that is going to compare if this output, so the output from the LLM is equal to the expected output which we are pulling from this data set over here, okay? So we're doing that for the category and we're doing that also for the priority uh, down below, okay? So we're matching them and we're saying essentially, well, do these two match? And it's gonna either return a true or a false. And we're doing the same thing over here. So now if we set this, now what we can do is, well, obviously save it. And then we go to the evaluations tab over here. Now what we can do is run the test from this beautiful N810 UI. And what it's going to do is that, well, I added that match expression, okay? And it's going to essentially run this in the background, run the same data set in the background. Now, the good thing is that we can do it directly from this UI and all the measurements, right? We're gonna get all the times that, you know, the expected output matched with the actual output, right? When we actually got the right answer and they're all gonna be logged 
over here. And what you can do is you, yeah, you can do a series of tests in the way that I've shown, right? You can run multiple tests and when it matches, you know, the accuracy that you want, obviously then you can push it into production. If it doesn't, then obviously you need to see what went wrong, change the system prompt accordingly and so on. So if you go to this test, for example, you can see here there's there's specific values, right? So a one means that the expected output was equal to the actual output. So we got the right answer. And zero means that we didn't get the right answer. Well, the LLM didn't get the right answer. So if you obviously like stack these, you can calculate how many times do we get the right answer for the category and how many times do we get the right answer for priority. And this is the percentage accuracy. So this is 83% accurate and this is 66 percent accurate and here we record the total cases right so the number of so you see that it's doing the whole thing right as you see over here so we have 35 rows 35 cases you want to call it and this is cool because you can see over time if it's getting more accurate or less accurate right over here we're hitting a plateau as expected because we didn't change the prompt or anything around it in the workflow between these runs okay so you can see how powerful this is so we can do this for a category match and you can also add you can also change this for the priority match and the thing is that you can add your own oops you can add your own metrics right so you can do this by using an ai model for example or you can you know build more custom metrics by adding a piece of code for example okay if you need more custom metrics so yeah this is pretty pretty powerful stuff and before you would need to do this via an external tool or by building your own evaluations on code. So yeah, this is a big step and I'm pretty sure that they're definitely gonna keep improving this and I'm very bullish with N810 and the platform that it's going to become. Like this is one of the first steps in becoming a very, very robust platform in order to push production grade systems, right? So yeah, I'm very excited for this update and please give it a shot. I'm pretty sure that it will help you a lot, especially getting confident with your workflows if they have LLMs or AI models. So yeah, give it a shot and let me know in the comments how it went, okay? So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.